Our next speaker is Dan Monk. Dan is a Fresno County Farm Advisor for the UC Cooperative Extension. Over the years, he's conducted and participated in many programs related to the irrigation and nutrient management. Dan was a key contributor in educating water board staff and in working with coalition and commodity groups in the development of the initial nitrogen management plan template. Because of his knowledge and expertise in both water and nutrient management, Dan was nominated and selected to serve on the State Water Board's Agricultural Expert Panel. His participation in the panel ensured that the sound science and practical expertise were incorporated into the recommendations, and we thank him for his involvement in this process. Dan will now give us a detailed overview of the Nitrogen Management Plan template. Dan? <coughs> Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, while we're loading up the slides here, I'll just make a, make a few introductory comments. First of all, thank you to uh, the staff here. Um, I've been working on some of this coalition stuff fairly recently, really just in the last year or two. I've had quite a bit of involvement in, uh, as Mark said, some of the state board activities, trying to provide information. I've uh, been working with, with the staff, just trying to identify what's going on with this LR, ILRP process. And I will tell you that at least from my standpoint and some of the other, you know, having an opportunity to, to meet with some of the other coalition leaders and whatnot, you guys have an excellent staff representing you right now. Um, what Casey talks about, none of that is hype. It, it's very, uh, it, it, it requires a lot of vigilance, a lot of work uh, on, on, on many different levels. And, and uh, it's been a real privilege for me to have an opportunity to work, work with the staff here. So um, with that, it looks like we're still, we're still looking for my presentation. It's, it's in there somewhere, Crystal. Let's see. Yeah, you got to find your drive, don't you? OK. So, so basically, um, what, what we're going to talk about today has to do with part of the, uh, and a key part of, of the paperwork that uh, uh, some of you all are going to have to, to uh, to, to comply with to, 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 uh, uh, for, for each of your farms. And what we're gonna, what we're gonna talk about is a nitrogen management plan. It's a, uh, it's a template that's been developed. There's been a lot of discussion, many hours of discussion on what should go into that plan. And the idea is basically trying to develop a, uh, an opportunity to capture probably what many of you are doing already. In other words, you're trying to evaluate each year you go in and you, you try to evaluate what, how much nitrogen do I need? Well, what is that based on? Some of it's going to be based on yield. Some of it's going to be based on uh, prior practices. And those are, those are all things that you're going to be able to capture in this, uh, in, in this, uh, in this form. And part of the, the, uh, the, the template uh, is, is fairly, some of it's fairly detailed. But I will tell you this, it's not rocket science, OK? It's not really sophisticated or complicated. Um, oh, my, my drive is not working. Okay. okay. Um, just real quick, because he's going to pull out a, a template out of your packet. I think some of you might have came in and did not get a packet. If that's the case, raise your hand, and we'll hand that out now so you can make sure you have the materials you need. Does anybody not get this packet when they walked in? Here's one here, Jose. One over here. You have a lady toward the back. Anybody else? In the back, two in the three in the back, way in the back. Anybody else? Well, you may. Uh, we'll see if we can get his flash drive working. But if not, we'll just uh, have to you know, have to walk him through it. Okay. Okay. So, Plan B. <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties here. I haven't had. A problem with that drive and other computers, but we did here today. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and talk from this sheet, try to give you a little bit of a sense uh, for for what's in it, and and uh, try to try to take you through that uh, uh, 
take you through the sheet a little bit. So, um, so I, I, as I was saying, this is really the opportunity to, to, uh, to document, one, first of all, it's a plan. It's what you intend to do for the coming season with, with regard to nitrogen, uh, nitrogen planning. And then two, it's a documentation at the end of the season to come back and sort of identify what you actually did. So those are the two basic elements of this. Uh, and and uh, uh, you know, some of this information is very obvious. There is a member ID that you have for the, uh, uh, for the, for the coalition. You'll use that to sort of identify yourself. There's some basic information about your APN, your, your field, uh, the field IDs that you have, your personal field ID, whatever that is. How is it associated with which APNs? So one of the first questions that, that comes up is which field or how many fields or can I group fields kind of thing? How, how many of these do we have to fill out? And, and I would say this, that, that basically these, these uh, uh, these, these field identifications, you're going to be filling these out for all of the area or for each area where you have pretty much independent or separate nitrogen management activities. So, it, it, you, you, and, and on the other hand, you might be grouping fields if you have exactly fairly identical management practices. So if it's the same variety, if, it's the, if, if there's similar elements but different fields, but you're treating them in a similar way, you're basically going to, you can basically take those two fields and file them with a single nitrogen management plan sheet. Plan or budget? Hey, we got my presentation up. Thank you. <laughs> Source C, you add those things up together, 
and you're going to have basically an answer for that. And that answer may not be exact or, or exactly precise, but it is going to allow you to, again, document uh, nitrogen applications over time. In terms of, of some of the def just sort of basic definitions, um, you know, things like crop end requirement. You know, it, you know, we do talk in terms of crop end requirements. Sometimes they, you know, that, that has different meanings to different people. One would be, uh, say, the amount of end that a, plant's, a plant must uptake uh, to achieve maximum yield. But that's different from the idea of, of, of the amount of end that must be applied to achieve maximum yield. And in fact, I, I'd argue that that, uh, that second definition is probably more applicable to what we're, where we're at here today and, and uh, the definition that we want to use in the future. So uh, some of the re related terms, crop end demand and crop end need, are also sort of intermixed and sometimes mixed in our language as well. So what is crop end uptake? Up, end uptake is basically the amount of end that's, that's taken up or absorbed by the plants during a specific time or period. It's also uh, can be used, uh, or sometimes referred to as crop end consumption or adsorption of, of nitrogen. And then there's something called harvest removal or crop nitrogen harvest removal, and that's the amount of, of nitrogen uh, basically that's in harvested plants, plant parts that actually leave the field. So again, we're, as, we're, as we're thinking about balances, that's an important number. If we're taking something off the field, and that's nitrogen, it's going to have to be replaced at some point in time, so that's an important value. Sometimes we refer to, to an end harvest index, and crops have very different uh, end harvest indexes. Think of a forage crop, where you're growing it up, you've got all this nitrogen in your forage, you, har you harvest that entire field, and you take it off. That's very different, for instance, than a system where you have, for instance, a, a vegetable crop, let's say, uh, let's say lettuce, where so much of that is still left, that nitrogen that was taken up by the plant is still left in the field, it ends up getting tilled in, and you end up basically reusing it for your next crop. <laughs> so just a, just a little bit of notes, a few notes on, on terminology here. So if we go back to the, the nutrient, uh, the worksheet here, one of the first things that it, it, it outlines here is it says it's a, it's a nitrogen uh, management plan worksheet and it's, it's basically a, uh, it's, for, your, it's, it's for, for management units. So I started to talk about management units. So management units, again, that's where we have uh, similar uh, activities happen, happening on, on uh, uh, either multiple fields or just a single field. Okay, that's your management unit. You're going to have a sheet for each one of those management units. Now, who's going to, who's going to prepare this form? Well, basically, as I understand the regulation, it's every commercial operation, every acre of commercial operation out there. So this is not this is not something that, that uh, uh, it, it, you know that, that, that doesn't apply somewhere. It, it basically applies to all commercial bag operations. And as, as we've talked about, there's some real basic information uh, up at the up at the top here, uh, including your APNs, your field numbers. But there's I want you to notice that there's kind of two sides to this form here. There's the side on the left here where we're talking about developing a plan, and then we're talking about actual numbers down below after, after so you, you've got a yield, now you report that yield, and then you have actual and applied, you're going to report that, and then and removal, we'll talk a little bit about that later, what that means. Um, and you've got that sort of side of the, of, the, uh, of the template here. If you go to the other side of the template, these are all of your end application Credits. So this is what's either either there already in the field in the soil, or it's what you're applying, okay, or, or what's going to become available uh, during the year to the field from from, uh, from, other, from some of the nitrogen sources. So to give you an example, let's go up to uh, go back to to uh, uh, making our uh, make, uh, you know filling this out and, and getting a sense for where you start. I think probably the logical place to start this is what is your projected yield. The higher the yield, the more nitrogen uptake, the more nitrogen is being removed from that field. And that's often a good place to start when, you, when you're thinking about your nit nitrogen recommendation for, for, your, uh, for your individual crop and field. Um, as an example, for instance, there's been a lot of work over the years in, 
cotton. And uh, we did, uh, at the University of California, uh, a number of farm advisors, uh, specialists in the industry supported uh, uh, quite a bit of work in cotton. And basically what we came up with after several years of, of collecting a lot of information <coughs> is that basically it's somewhere between 45 and 55 pounds of nitrogen are required for every bale of cotton produced. So uh, to give you an idea of what, it, what a, an average yield might be, let's call it 1,500 pounds for the sake of argument, which is basically a three bale crop. Um, 150, uh, this tells us that we're going to remove uh, uh, and, and need about uh, 150 to 165 pounds of nitrogen for that three bale crop. So that's where we start the season. That's our plan. Our plan is to go in and now find a way to come up with that 150 to 165 pounds of nitrogen. So where is it going to come from? Just a comment on, on, um, on, on setting goals and, what, and developing that initial goal. Um, certainly, you could use a maximum yield. What is your maximum potential yield? That might be a way to, to, to start out. And then, and then maybe as the season goes on, if you're making multiple N applications, maybe you pull back from that. That might, be a, that might be a reasonable approach. You might use average yield. You might use, for instance, a, 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 a rolling average, something that uh, you, you, over the last few years you have a pretty good idea of what that field performance is. You can use a rolling average or something like that. Or, or adjusting a past average by uh, dropping some of the exceptional years. So if you know you've had some real high or real low years, that might not be something that you want to include in the, in the information. Certainly adjusting the a past average by some percentage. If you know that you're, each year you're kind of doing a little bit better, you know, look at those and make, make some of those projections. So, but I think the point is, is making realistic goal yield expectations and, and therefore you're going to match a nitrogen plan that matches what you're, you're actually doing. Now on this application side, you go down to the bottom and it says total and applied and available N. And uh, so basically that's going to that's gonna be that right hand side, that's going to be the sum of all of the applications and all of the nitrogen that's already present or estimated to be present in the, in the field. And uh, here, here we are with uh, uh, nitrogen credits. Uh, basically there's two, two primary categories here. The first is residual soil nitrogen. So I think many of you are familiar with, with soil nitrogen tests. Basically, um, you know, they're, they're going to, this is a, a nitrate test. Oftentimes we recommend the top two feet. So you, you pull a sample from the top foot, you pull a sample from the second foot, you <coughs> add those together basically, and you come up and you calculate how many pounds of nitrogen are in the field when you start the season. So this is oftentimes, uh, you know, depending upon whether you're a permanent uh, crop grower or whether you're, you're an annual crop grower, um, oftentimes this is done first thing in the season as just, just before there's a lot of uptake of nitrogen. So right now, would be, for, for many crops, right now would be a, an opportune time to look at what is, your, what, is, what is the system starting out with? How much nitrogen do you already have in the field? <coughs> the, uh, the, the, the second part of this is, is N in the irrigation water. And for surface irrigation water, we basically don't have much nitrates in the surface irrigation water. However, there are many wells, particularly on the east side, where nitrogen can be a significant component. If you're pumping two, three, four acre feet of water, <coughs> that volume of water having some nitrate in it is likely going to have a contribution to the, and a significant contribution to the, to the plant, uh, to, to plant nit to meeting plant nitrogen needs. So to, uh, to sort of give, give you just a, a, a quick example here, uh, let's say that there's a, you know, we've got a processing tomato which uses about 25 inches of water. That's the value you're going to use, not the application that you actually put on, you know, not the three feet, two and a half or three feet of water that you actually used, but how much is that plant actually taking up of that water? So use that transpiration value, what you think your, your estimated transpiration is for the season, and those values are pretty white, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to find long-term averages of the crop that you're growing. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we, we'll work with you on, on developing some of that information. We've got a lot of good information on crop ET. And then, uh, in this case, we're using 
uh, the example of six parts per nitrate, uh, 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 parts per million of nitrate nitrogen. Um, and, and you can see here with uh, uh, irrigation water that has a six part per million uh, value, you can you use your conversion factor and you come up with about 1.4 pounds of nitrate per acre inch of water. And in this case, we came up with a, an example of about 35 pounds of nitrogen. So this is part of that nitrogen budgeting or balance that you're going to that we're, that we're uh, looking at here. So we've got, we've got residual soil nitrate credits. There's nitrate in the ir irrigation water. And then uh, there is often, there is always some contribution from mineralized uh, nitrogen also. So nitrogen, that uh, it might be from crop residues from the previous season. They degrade over time. And these are values that, that are not often captured in the residual nitrogen, but certainly something that contributes to the nitrogen balance in your in your field. So where are we going to make up the difference? Obviously, we've harvested a lot of nitrogen. We've removed a lot of nitrogen from the previous year. And obviously, we need to, to take care of the plant this year. This is where your decisions really come in in terms of how much you apply. So, so basically, we're, we, we've got uh, uh, we've got we've got dry and foliar opportunities to, to report dry and foliar nitrogen that are being applied, and then there's this organic material. So if, you're, if you have compost, if you, whether they're you know, manures that are raw or composted, um, any other, other source of organic matter material or organic mineral in, uh, those, you're going to have an estimate of what the percent N is from that, and then what, how much of that is going to be available. <coughs> That's going to go in this box here. Uh, again, you've got a, a column here that says rec uh, recommended, so that's, that might be part of that plan that's in the early part of the season, and then the, the actual end is being reported here at the, at the end of the season. And I put this slide up here just to remind us that, the, again, this is not highly exact. I mean, look, you know, the, 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 you know, the mineral end, for, or, or excuse me, uh, some of the composts and, and uh, uh, organic matter nitrogen in, we don't actually know exactly how much of that is going to become available to the crop. We've got some good estimates. I'm, I'm just coming from a conference up in Fresno, uh, the Plant and Soil Conference from the Agronomy Society of America, where a lot of the discussions are is, you know, how much do we know about some of these composts and when they release the material, how much they release. Certainly we know that not all of it's available right away, and oftentimes you're only putting in a value of nitrogen that ranges from about 25 to 50 percent of the nitrogen that's in that mineral, that, that, that uh, manure or that compost or that, that uh, uh, organic end. Only, only 25 to 50 percent of that is common, commonly available. So um, again, this is an area where we're, we're not exact. That's probably the, mo the least, probably the, the, the one where we have the least amount of information available. But then you can you, you can add, you know, you've got better confidence on how much you're applying. You have better confidence on what your, what your uh, irrigation water contribution is to come up with a, a balance or a, an application amount, plus or minus, you know, a small amount. And then we come down here to, to uh, the, the production actuals at the end of the season. And basically uh, what we're doing here is we're basically just, you know, we're, we're documenting what the actual yield is. And then, we, and then we're going to, uh, uh, if, we, if we know what that actual yield is, we know what some of our total N applied is, um, and, and we know what nitrogen, and we, we estimate what nitrogen removal is, okay? And that's, a, that's another sort of, uh, sort of difficult one to arrive at. There's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good and interesting information about how much nitrogen is removed in harvest, but it's, oftentimes it's highly variable. And so that's another area where we actually need a lot more information. We do have some good estimates. We know what some of the ranges are. Here you can see, you know, apples, there's not the, the data that we have available today doesn't say there's a lot of variability. However, you just, you know, look at some of the citrus or you look at, uh, you know, many of these other crops, to, uh, even table grapes, you know, if you put a, an average value in there for 1.6, you're probably, you know, of, of pounds of nitrogen for per thousand pounds of, of fruit produced, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be an exact value, but again, it's an attempt to try to balance the end of the system. So, but at the end of the day, 
we can start thinking in terms of how much nitrogen is applied relative to how much is being removed. And on this nitrogen e uh, expert panel that, that Mark and I served on, and there's a lot of discussion about how to arrive at these, these ratios and what kinds of information to put in uh, these nitrogen uh, ratios. And, and obviously, the, the higher that value is, in other words, the more nitrogen you put on relative to the, the uh, amount that's removed, the higher that there are going to be potential losses. Now, we don't know if those losses are going to be to groundwater. We don't know, if, you know, in some cases it's runoff. Some of it's, sometimes we have gaseous losses. <coughs> but over time, if you look at the balance of nitrogen, because you might have a high nitrogen ratio this year when you, you actually loaded the soil up quite a bit, but you may have adjusted for it then next year when you used your soil values to actually apply less nitrogen. So over time, the idea here is, is that we're going to be, there's going to be a, 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 a value, a metric here that can be used uh, to help uh, guide some of our nitrogen management decisions. So to, to kind of summarize here, nitrogen systems are complex, but they're not impossible to, to at least get, get to a, a, a place where we're confident that we're applying enough nitrogen to meet crop needs, but without doing a job of really you know, over applying in, in a large way. So, so using it, uh, proxy metrics like the, the application removal <laughs> ratio will help us provide better estimates of what our nitrogen use efficiency is. And I, I just kind of put this diagram in here to remind us that, that this you know, it is a fairly, you know, it can be a somewhat complicated system, but I don't think it's impossible, and, and I think there, there's some things that we can uh, gain as, as uh, crop managers uh, to, uh, to reduce some of the, the, uh, uh, the, the nitrogen losses that we have in our systems.